Good morning. Today we will discuss about digital filters. In the last lecture, we have seen about least error square technique, and we have seen that this method will be helpful for us when the signal has decaying VC components. And we have also seen that the number of samples which are to be considered must be greater than or equal to 2H plus 1 where H is a harmonic number of harmonics which you need to consider along with your DC components. And we have also seen the problem that the higher number of samples you take then the results will be more effective. And in today's class we will see about the different filters which are used for digital filtering and numerical analysis. So I'll start with the conventional analog filters. We'll see what are the drawbacks of those things and then we'll move on to the digital filters. What are the advantages of them? What actually low pass and high pass digital filters are? I'll just give you a glimpse of how these do work. And at the end, I'll just give a quick review about IR filters and FIR filters which you might have already studied in your signal sync systems course of the last semester. So before I move any further, you know that the signals when you are in power system, So this is your power system, these are your transformers, this is your transmission line, generators, so many components will be there in your power system. When you are tracking down all these voltages and currents at these points and you are transmitting them, your data will be consisting of too many, too much amount of faulty data sometimes. So you need to filter out those faulty data and give it to your computer such that it takes in only good data and then analyzes the system. So for that, what you should do is nothing but whatever data which you get from these meters, that you should process first. So remove harmonics. Right. Because these may damage your system. So there are two types of filtering which is employed, which are employed. One is analog filtering, the other one is digital filter. So what we do is that whatever the data which you get, first of all it will be processed through analog filters and then it is moved on to your digital filtering. So nowadays everybody is employing digital filtering. Okay, so we will see what is the major difference between analog filtering and digital filtering. In analog filtering, we generally employ, there are two types of things. One is a passive filter, the other one is a active filters. In passive analog filters, we do employ RLC components. The simple RLC circuits will be enough for you to design an analog passive filter. Whereas in case of active filters, we do employ transistors, uh, what we call as operational amplifiers, OPAPs. Right. So, what is the major problem? See, even if you take a, let us suppose, a source. This is your V input. This is your V output. This is your L. This is your R. This will act as a filter for you. It will allow only a few amount of few set of frequencies when compared to the entire frequency sets. So this will act as a filter and this is just a simple representation of your analog passive filter. Similarly, you can have analog active filters also. You can employ op-amps also. So what is the major difference, what is the biggest problem with these analog filters is that normally these analog filters they are very bulky because they generally employ inductors and inductors are a little bit bulky. When compared to your passive, active filters are a little bit better because they do employ uh, op amps and one more thing is that these op amps also and these inductors also they must be you are supposed to be very high precision components 
when you are picking high precision components which are available in the market it makes your circuit a little bit expensive that is the biggest problem with your uh, analog filters and moreover the RLC components if you take and even the op amps also if you take see these op amps are exclusively basically they are made up of semiconductor elements and there is a change in operating temperature then their characteristics are going to change whereas for RLC their characteristics they will be changing with respect to aging factor aging is one important thing the other one is the temperature changes even your resistor also it varies when there is change in temperature so they are subjected to changes in time and temperature and moreover to design low pass filter is a little bit tougher task with your active filters they do require very high precision values when you want to design low pass filters so that's why I have mentioned here filters were very low frequencies they need very impracticably high component high precision values which is difficult for us and because of that particular reason we do employ these passive filters and active filters analog filters to some simple conventional characteristics not for very precision problems and moreover when there is a change in the input signal, if you do get too much amount of transients into your signal, then this RLC component characteristics also are going to change. That is one of the biggest problems. Their values, the magnitude of RLNC also, they will change sometimes because of the transients which you get into the system. So that's why we feel that those are not properly adoptable. The more important thing is that we can't change the characteristics of the filter unless we replace them manually or some sort of things. So it is difficult for us to program them. They are not programmable, which means that they won't be adaptable to our requirements. We need to change them physically every time. So because of all these topics, we are moving on to digital filters nowadays. So what are the advantages of digital filters? Digital filters, they do require the same basic hardware. Just like your anti-aliasing filters you should use. The sample and hold circuits because you do need to convert the data into discrete structures and at the same time you do require adc connectors so you do require all these components for getting the data into your digital filters once you get the data from these anti-aliasing filters sample and hold circuits see once your data processes all these things then automatically your data will be converted into digital data and this digital data is fed to your digital filter which will then filter out your unwanted harmonics. So, your digital filter exists in software, not in hardware. These things, they are hardware. Your digital filter is exclusively one, it comes into picture when you convert your entire data into digital data. And once you have the digital data, you feed it to your system. So, based upon your software, based upon your algorithm, what you write, then the filtering process starts. Okay. So it's all about your software and uh, the related algorithm which you are going to write to filter out these things. So the biggest advantage of digital filters is that a good programmer can write a very good algorithm to eliminate the unwanted harmonic components in your sector. Okay. So it all requires a good programmer and nothing more else. So once you do have the digital data, it's all about the programmer, how well he can write the program. You don't require any very high component, precision components. You don't require any bulky components like your RLC. You don't need to work with certain temperatures like that. You don't have that difficulties. And if a programmer is good enough, he can change the characteristics. He can just try change the program. He can change the code and he can change the characteristics of the filter. If you want to design a, a low pass filter or a high pass filter, just sitting across his computer by just typing something, he can change the things. And you don't need any proper tuning or any maintenance also. And there is no concept, concept of any aging factor also, unless the programmer gets some age. Okay, so there is no aging and uh, no problem of your time and also temperature problems. So with all of these advantages, digital filters are now being extensively used nowadays. So when I speak about this digital filters, now comes the concept of this low pass filter and uh, high pass filter. So what is actually low pass filter and what is actually high pass filter? You know it very well, right? So what do you mean by low pass filter and the high pass filter? See, it's about when you do represent uh, 
So before I move on to this filter, it comes into your mind. Let us suppose this is your signal. This is not a sinusoidal signal. If I take a sinusoidal signal, this is with respect to time, right? This is your time analysis. And how will you represent it in terms of frequency? The signal is having only one particular frequency, it is 50 Hz. So when you write it on the frequency band, then you will get only one signal. And this is the magnitude. Whatever the magnitude which you will be getting, this is your signal. See, so don't get confused between the time domain and also the frequency domain. This is in your time representation, this is in your frequency representation. Now if you type this particular signal, let us suppose this is consisting of some fundamental component and some third harmonic component and some fifth order harmonic component. So how will it be if I draw it in terms of frequency band? Let us suppose it is having some DC component also. So it will be having some DC component and it will be having some fundamental component and there will be third harmonic component and there will be some fourth order harmonic component. This is my frequency representation of this particular signal. And this is my frequency representation of this particular signal. So what you need to do, if you want to filter out the things, means you should minimize this harmonics, right? Which means that the higher order harmonic components, they must be eliminated. This is what you are supposed to do. Understood now? If you want high pass filter means, you should eliminate this low order harmonics. So understanding the frequency response, that you should learn. So don't always uh, be in a uh, idea that this is something different. This is actually the representation of this particular waveform only, but in a frequency form. Okay. So when I speak about this low pass filter, what you are supposed to do? You are supposed to eliminate higher order harmonics and you should allow only low pass. So when you do have sample data, digital data, how you will do is nothing but a simple mathematical operation can do the thing. See. If xn and xn minus 1, these are the samples, no? You should write an equation. This is a simple low pass filter. Why it is equal to xn plus xn minus 1 by 2? Now you may ask me, sir, how can this is possible to get a low pass filter with just this simple equation? Now I will show you. See, this is my input signal. But this is with respect to time. Okay. See, now if you carefully see, these are the unwanted things which I do have in my system. They may be of very high frequency components also, okay? Because they are sustaining only for small time, which means that they might be of a higher order frequency. So I need to eliminate these things. So what I should do, I'm giving it this particular signal, yn is equal to xn. I'm taking average of present, present sample and previous sample. So this one, I don't have any previous signal, so I will get 0 here. Now, I will take average of these two. What I will get? When I take average of these two, I will get somewhere here, right? So, this is my from here. What is this? I will take average of these two, so I will be getting a little bit more higher value. And then, if I take average of these two, see this higher plus component, this is negative component. What I will get? I will get, let us suppose this is 1, this is 3, this is some 10, this is minus 5, this is somewhere 5 again, this is 3, this is 1, and this is 0. Okay, so this is my signal. Now let us suppose if I take this is 3 plus 1 by 2, so I will get 2 here, this is 0.5, this is 2, here I will get 10, 30, see I will get 6.5, and here 10 minus 5, I will get 5, this is 2.5. And again, this is 0, I'll get. And again, this, I'll get 1.5. And here again, I'll be getting this 0.5. See, my, these 10 minus 5, which are of completely different values when compared to this particular one. Now, these are minimized. A little bit, some more, less, just like a simple sinusoidal waveform I'm getting. Maybe there is a little bit difference. But if I carefully choose the coefficients here, and if I choose something else also, I can bring it to a simple sinusoidal signal. I can eliminate the higher order harmonics. I can agree that this is not a pure sinusoidal signal. It is having a harmonics. 
but the higher order harmonics have been eliminated. Okay, so this is the way how we do a simple low pass function. What I should do now? I should use some more coefficients here to get a better results, and I should use more number of samples. Okay, so this is a simple low pass filter. I hope that now you have understood how simple low pass filters are designed. They are just taken with the help of the available samples and just uh, summing up them, giving them average gives you a low pass filter. See, this is what I have mentioned here. At sample number three, see, this is sample number three. Okay, there is a large noise signal, whereas at sample number four, there is a noise signal of equal magnitude but of opposite polarity. Thus, there is a high frequency noise signal riding over the low frequency information. This is a low frequency signal. There is a high frequency noise component. So, what I am doing here, since output signal is formed by taking a running average, the effect of a positive spike followed by negative spike is totally cancelled out and we get a smoother signal. Now. May not be this much smoother, but if I use proper coefficients here, I can get a smoother signal. So, in this way, higher order signals can be got rid of, allowing only low pass filters, low frequencies to pass through. This is called as low pass filter. Whereas, coming to high pass filter, it is the reverse case. So, what I will be doing is nothing but I will be taking the river running difference of these things. So, I will show you now. See, the high pass filtering takes place when any sudden changes of sign of the sample gets amplified. So, slowly varying samples of signal almost cancel out each other in the outputs. See, in this case, now if you carefully see, I will check again, this is 0, this is 3, this is 9, this is minus 7, I will check uh, this is 5, this is 3, this is 1. Okay, so in this case, if I take the difference between these two and I take the average, see, this is 3 minus 0, I will get 1.5, I will check 0, this is 1.5. This is 9 minus 3, it is 6, right? 3, this is minus 7 minus 9, I will get minus 16, so I will get minus 8. And this is 5 minus 7 minus 12, so I will get 6, this is minus 2. And this is, right. So this is the way. If you carefully see, there is a huge gap between these things. Which means that my signal, my output signal will be like this. If I take proper coefficients of these things, my output signal will be like this. Okay. Which means that my low pass frequencies are cancelled out. Low frequencies are cancelled out. Instead, I am getting only higher order frequencies. You are allowing only higher order frequencies in the system. So, it is just a representation of your high pass filter. Okay. So, these are the simple low pass filter and high pass filters which you do have, which you need to employ. All what you need to do is nothing but you are supposed to write a proper code by selecting proper coefficients. You are having already sample data and you do need to write some code in some programming language so that you will get these harmonics get eliminated out based upon your requirements. Okay. And